Coyote Time refers to a technique used in games to make the gameplay feel more fair and forgiving to players. It is based on the idea that players should be given a brief window of time to jump after they've run off the edge, even if they technically should have fallen already. This technique is called Coyote Time because it is similar to the way that Wily e. Coyote is often portrayed in Looney Tunes. When Wily e. Coyote runs off a cliff, there is a moment where they can keep running in midair before they actually start falling. And just like in our games, we should give a brief window of time where players can jump even if they've left the ground. This technique is often talked about from a platforming perspective, but I think it's important to implement in pretty much all games where there is jumping. For example, in the first person perspective, I can't even see the ground. So let's jump into our project and get started. So we can add code time pretty easily. There's not a lot of variables we need. Uh, just jump back into the code here and we'll create a new variable called jump available. And this will be a bool and it's gonna be set to true by default. And we're gonna use this to replace our check down here when we're handling the jump. If is action pressed, UI accept and is on floor, we'll replace that with and jump available. And then right after we have jumped, we will make jump available false. Okay, and what we need to do obviously is when we're on the floor, this check here is if not on floor, apply gravity, else jump available is equal to true. And just by doing that, we've replaced the variable that controls whether or not we're able to jump, but you can see that obviously we are setting that to false when we leave the ground. So we can fix that pretty easily. We'll jump down here at the bottom of our script and we'll create a new function called Cody timeout. And it doesn't take any variables and we'll just set it jump available is equal to false. Uh, we'll also need to create an export variable for this. Uh, we'll call it Cody time as you might imagine, and it will be a float. And I'm not gonna make mine pretty high for the initial example of 0.5 seconds. That's as long as it takes us to fall to the ground. So what we can do is now, if not is on floor, where we would normally set jump available to false, we can actually just go, and I'll put this at the top so that it's sort of in the right order, get tree dot create timer, and we'll pass in the Cody time that we just created, dot timeout, dot connect and we'll connect that callable which is Cody time out and we just delete those brackets there so we actually don't want to just call this if we're not on the floor we want to make sure that we're only calling this if the jump available is true so we're not continuously creating that timer throughout the fall okay so let's jump into the project and have a look here I've created a timer so you can see what's going on and on second thought that 0.5 seconds is probably a little bit too long for the example so I'm going to reduce that down to 0.1 and I've also added is on floor. So now you can see really clearly that can jump when we're clearly not on the floor. So we'll slow this down so you can see really clearly that is on floor, it goes to false, jump available is still true, and we're still able to execute our jump, which is exactly what code time is, the ability to jump when we're no longer on the floor. So that's a very simple version of Coyote Time, and this is totally fine if you're just happy for the player to fall, but we can't actually stop a scene tree timer once it's started. So if you were to fall on a very small ledge, there's a chance that that timer might expire by the time you get to the next ledge. Fortunately, we can add a timer. So I'll come over to the player and I'll add a timer. Um, and we don't really need to do anything with that. I'm gonna rename it to Coyote Time. We're just gonna use all the variables that we've already created. Um, and so I'll create a reference to this in our script. I'll just control click and drag that. So try not to get confused between Coyote Timer and Coyote Time. And we'll come right back down to where we've created that scene tree timer. And we'll check if Coyote Timer dot is stopped because we don't really want to be continuously starting that timer every time we come to this section of code. Otherwise the timer will never time out. So right below that, we'll type Cody timer dot start and we'll pass in that time that we created, Cody time. And we'll just comment out this get tree create timer. And last but not least, when we land, we also need to stop that timer so that it doesn't trigger when we're on the ground. This is the main reason we want to use a timer over a scene tree timer because scene tree timers don't have that function. And then we also need to connect the timeout signal so you just copy that function and we can paste it, you double click timeout and then just paste that as the receiver method and it should link up, no problems. And that's literally it. This is how you do Cody timer with a timer. 
and pretty much exactly the same. You can see is on floor goes false and then jump available turns false. Really straightforward stuff. Uh, that's how you do it with a scene tree timer and also just a timer node. Both are totally fine to use, but I think using the timer node gives us a little bit of flexibility. For example, you could add an else conditional here. You can say if jump available, Cody time start, else gravity. And so now you'll just be walking on air basically until that Cody timer times out. Um, and you'll notice here that even though jump distance is set to four, now I can jump five. So keep that in mind when you're designing something like this, especially if you're not applying gravity. Um, Cody time, generally you want it to be pretty short, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, it depends. If it's a game jam, I have definitely had people tell me that I didn't have Cody time in my game, even though I did, it was just too short for them. So maybe give it a little bit of extra time if it's a game jam, if not, then you're gonna have more time to tune that and work with playtesters. That's how you do coyote time. All right, guys, that is coyote time, a pretty simple mechanic to implement. I've covered it a couple of times now, but I thought it was worth updating for Godot 4. If you found this video helpful, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're feeling extra generous, you can join me over on patreon.com slash shaft games, where all my videos are posted in advance and top tiers get access to my FPS pro asset, which includes a fully animated FPS reg and plenty of juice. I'm Isaac from Shaft Games, and I'll see you next time.